Pro-lifers are responding to the effort, calling the leader's words about Margaret Sanger empty, pointing out that many of the abortion provider's current practices remain racist. The head of the nation's largest abortion provider used the New York Times as the forum to admit the racism of its founder. In this weekend's op-ed, Alexis McGill Johnson wrote, we must reckon with Margaret Sanger's association with white supremacist groups and eugenics. Acknowledging failure to own the impact of their founder's actions, Johnson went on to say, whether our founder was a racist is not a simple yes or no question. Yet in her own words, Sanger strived for a society that limited births to only those she deemed fit to have children. Many cite a 1923 New York Times interview in which she called some groups of people human weeds as proof of her racist motives. Birth control is not contraception indiscriminately and thoughtlessly practiced, she said in the article. It means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extirpation of defective stocks, those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. If they want to do something different, they could stop killing our children. Benjamin Watson, vice president of the pro-life group Human Coalition, maintains Planned Parenthood's admission about Sanger does not absolve them from the blood on their hands as they take advantage of victims of the very racism they decry. I find it um, hollow for them to call out Margaret Sanger and talk about her association with white supremacist groups and talk about her connection to eugenics and, and try to uh, distance themselves from her while they are still perpetuating her mission that is systematically targeting uh, young, largely African-American, largely poor women and families and children. According to CDC data, black women make up 14 percent of the childbearing population, yet had 36 percent of abortions. And a survey by Protecting Black Life found 79 percent of Planned Parenthood's facilities are located in communities of color. Alveda King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and it's president so of Priests for Life, calls Johnson's words misleading. She's trying to walk back the truth about who and what Planned Parenthood is today. Ask Lila Rhodes, who did an expose in this century with people admitting they were donating money to Planned Parenthood to specifically abort black babies. Watson says if Planned Parenthood really wants to change, it should take the next step. If they want to do something different, they can use the billions of dollars that they've had to walk with these mothers in crisis and these families in crisis and provide for them long past a decision to abort, but push them towards a decision to parent. A move King adds is not likely to happen. They're not about to stop aborting babies. They don't intend to stop killing human beings in the womb. CBN News reached out to Planned Parenthood so we could speak with Alexis McGill Johnson about this stance. And so far, we have received no response. Charlene Aaron, CBN News.